What's up you guys? Welcome back to the YouTube Barber Academy. Today, we're gonna give this one a spin here. You guys see this is all long, all out of shape, and we're about to give him a nice skin fade with a hard part, right? And we're gonna rock with the same kind of style. Uh, his hair is actually a lot like mine. There's a lot of little challenges here. There's a lot of little nuances that we'll do to get this right. All right, and if you guys subscribe to the channel membership, you guys are gonna see the full cut. This cut's probably gonna take like 35 minutes and I'm not gonna cut nothing out of it so you guys can see all of it. But for the rest of you guys, let's start with this nice cut up edit so that I can get you guys to learn too, all right? So some of the things we're gonna do here, wanna be mindful of is I wanna know where to part it and I'm gonna comb through the hair and get it checked out. So let's get started, ready? So we're gonna be using the Zuka neck guard. Uh, what this does is this stops all hair uh, from getting underneath his cape. Okay, I got me the saber right here and I'm gonna use the number four. The reason why I'm gonna use the number four is because I wanna preserve some of the darkness towards the top of the parietal ridge. Otherwise, this whole haircut is not gonna have the contrast because his hair, when I cut it short, it's just gonna show every little thing and I wanna keep some darkness towards the top. So I'm gonna come up to the parietal ridge where you put the comb on the side of the head, that's right about where it starts sticking out and I'm gonna start coming off the head. You'll notice that I have a taper blade on my Sabre. Sabre is a great clipper. It has a six hour runtime and it's got a brushless motor that's very forgiving. So I'm gonna put in my first line and I'm not really gonna worry about anything at the bottom. And of course, as always, for reasons we discussed in the skin line positioning video, I'm going to curve my skin lines. So what that's gonna do in a nutshell is it's gonna preserve some of that edge and it's gonna preserve uh, some of the shape of the blend that I wanted to actually have uh, as it approaches the top. All right, now that I got my skin line in, we're gonna follow up underneath it and I'm gonna be using the Saber trimmer. This is gonna cut the hair to five zeros. I wanna come as close as I can to that without running into it. The whole purpose was to soften this guide and moving this in the upward direction is gonna soften it. If you put it like this, you could very easily create a line. So we're gonna keep the trimmer facing upward and we're gonna remove all that bulk. Now I know that you guys are gonna probably ask questions about this blade because it's not available yet. It's exactly the same as the other blade, it's just a little bit smaller. This is Gamma's take on the slimline blade and uh, we're gonna be having some of these blades for sale very soon. It's just a fun little blade to use, especially when people's like vertical bars are kind of short or maybe when you're doing designs. I do like having this shorter blade. However, the new Gold X-Pro blade is just as good, works the same. It's just a little bit bigger. And in fact, it would actually be better for what I'm doing right now because I could remove this bulk faster. Now that we got that all the way down to five zeros, we're gonna jump over to our Rebel electric shaver. This is the fastest little electric shaver on the market. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna come up close to the line and we're gonna begin pulling it away. All right, that's what we wanna see. It's completely cleaned off all the way up to where we ended off with our trimmer. All the debulk work is done, phase one is complete. Uh, we're gonna move on to stage three first. I'm actually gonna skip the clipper over comb. Stage two is clipper over comb and we don't really need it just yet. So I'm gonna skip that, we're gonna move to phase three and we're gonna cut the top because what I like to do is I like to see where I'm starting from right here and I like to see where I'm ending at right here. So let's cut the top. I got my Mitsutani's, they were given to me by Shear Police and if you guys need some shears, they're just a great group of guys. Go over there, support them. You can use my code Eddie, you can save 10%. So we are ready to move into our blend. All right, so blending is phase four and we'll circle back to some clipper over comb around the parietal ridge. So let's start doing our blend once again with the most forgiving machine that we have, the Sabre. We're gonna put it in the open position. So push the lever all the way down, that's open, that's gonna leave the hair longer. We're gonna put it in a fully open position and we're gonna make a secondary guideline that's about the width of our pinky. All right, so all we're doing at this point is putting in guidelines and the next guideline that we're gonna put in is going to be the number one and we're gonna put the number one in with the two clicks. So one, two clicks open and I'm gonna put in my next guideline, same thing, the width of my pinky. So same thing, scooping out. Very important that you hold it flat at a certain point. So I'm pushing hard enough to hold it flat and then I'm scooping out. This is an area where a lot of people make mistakes. They're leaving the head too much and they're holding the clipper wrong so they're never getting down 
to the length that they're supposed to. This is a number one and I have it two clicks open. So I wanna try to hit that length the best that I possibly can. All right, so now is a good time to jump out of phase four, go back to phase two for a second. I'm gonna use a little clipper over comb. I can see how this is shaping up. I'll grab my clipper comb. This is a Zuka clipper comb. I like this clipper comb a lot. And I'm gonna scoop it out on the angle that I wanna have it, blend that, and I'm gonna remove some of that bulk. This is pretty simple. You'll see me moving faster than I should sometimes, but this is just the way the things go. Like once you get to know this well, you can do this really quick. Uh, but you do not have to do this fast. You can also move the clipper horizontally up the teeth and just hold it out on the angle that you want to hold it out on. Same thing here, holding it out on the angle that I want and just coming across the comb. Nothing complicated about this. And of course, as always, if you guys need to learn more about clipper over comb, you can check out my video. It's a full 30 minute video that breaks down every aspect of this. And also we are going to Fort Worth Barber Supply uh, September, I'll put the date on the screen, and I'm actually teaching a hands-on class about clipper over comb. Not a lot of people like to dive into this topic. They feel it's really complicated. Some people feel like they just can't learn it. Trust me, if you spend a little bit of time with me, I will get you comfortable with clipper over comb because I know everything there is to know to tell you about it, and I know how to communicate it to you. You can learn, uh, even if you failed before. So shout out to Fort Worth Barber Supply. Thank you so much uh, for inviting me out to teach the class. And, and we're gonna be able to play golf in Texas, so I'm really looking forward to it. We're gonna begin actually blending. So we put in two guidelines. Boom, boom, with the number one. All right, so we're gonna begin removing this bottom line. Make sure you stick around to the end because we are gonna be using the pencils, the 245 pencils, and we're gonna be enhancing his edge up so he's gonna look super fresh when he leaves here today. So how do we get this line out? Let's remember, we put this line in pretty soft. We're gonna begin with the clipper in the fully closed position. Again, this is the taper blade, very soft cut. This might not get all of our line out, but it's gonna get us close because of how we put it in. So, we're gonna go ahead and we're just going to kinda of keep our clipper on a little bit of an angle and just use the corner and push up on that line. Just flicking up on that little line, that's it. Only with the corner. Now once we've done that, we'll open it and we'll do it again. Just using the corner. Don't even bother using the rest of the blade, just use the corner. With hair like his and hair like mine, so easy to make a mistake if you're not careful. And using the corners is what's gonna keep you careful. Opening it again. We're gonna continue this process until this clipper is once again in the open, open taper position. I'm liking that, so we're gonna jump to the next step. Um, remember, we never really used the half. Uh, we're gonna use the half now. We're gonna put the half on. We're gonna open it two clicks, one, two, and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna repeat the same process. Now, again, just using the corner. I don't wanna use the full blade. I don't wanna make a mistake. Just kinda wanna use the corner and continue on the softness. There's, there's no clipper that is as forgiving as the Sabre, especially when you put a taper blade on it. It is just the most forgiving blade and I could push up into these lengths and I know that I'm not gonna create other issues for myself. Now the two clicks are just a guide. So if you feel like you wanna close it down or you wanna open it, I mean, obviously feel free to do that. And I'm gonna do just that. I'm closing it down a little bit, seeing what I can't get done with it. Maybe I'll open it as well. And again, we did the number one. We did that with the two clicks. So now I'm gonna go back to the number one. I'm gonna open it up all the way and I'm gonna bounce them around just a little bit so I get this right and only using the corner to do my blending. If anything, this illustrates the point of how that clipper over comb uh, worked really well for us. And uh, if you'd like, you can jump to the one and one half. I'm gonna just open this all the way, see if this softens this area up. But I really don't care too much about this because I, I got shear over comb. I got a number of ways to do this and, and really um, at a certain point, the clipper is just gonna cause more trouble than it's worth. So it's better to use another technique. So we're gonna use shear over comb to further refine this area especially. Uh, I just wanna make sure that I got everything dry and kind of styled before I really go chipping into that anymore.
from the middle and I'm gonna work my way out to the corners. Uh, just a little bit at a time at first, just to see you know how it's shaping up. And before I put that hard part line in, I wanna make sure I, I choose a good spot for that. So sometimes I like to just sort of roughly address where, what the edge up is gonna look like first. No great reason to go getting into his hairline completely. Like I'm not gonna do that just, just for the sake of doing that. I'm just cutting off the hairs uh, that are that are kind of not not going my way. Alright? So we're gonna begin the hard part. The sabers just eat right through this hair. I love this blade, so I keep using it. It's just so small, it's so maneuverable, just makes this process very easy. All right, so that's how you select a really nice place for your hard part. Because that can be a really hard thing sometimes. It's like, you're not 100% sure where to put it in. Well, I got news for you. Cut the rest of the hair, get everything flowing the way you want it to, do part of the edge up, and then it'll become a lot easier to see where that should be. Okay, so now we're gonna do the enhancements. I didn't use the razor yet, but that's okay. I'll go ahead and use the enhancements first, and then I'll follow up with the razor anyways. So we're gonna grab our gun. I've had some really good luck with this gun. I'm gonna use Tomb 45 no drip as always. Make sure that you mix this really good. I'm using black brown for his hair. And then there's a couple little tricks to this. A lot of people are gonna ask me if you need to mix that. You don't need to mix that with anything. Tomb 45 no drip, it comes ready to go. This is a Sean Cuts hair color card. And it's, it's literally designed just for this. Taking care of these corners, and getting it right in there. I'm gonna continue that hard line right, right there, because I really want that to stand out. This gun is it's spraying perfect. When it works like this, it just really makes the job a lot easier. And then I'm gonna follow it up with the razor, because I did this a little bit in reverse. But that's kind of cool, because if I put this color in first, it gives me a nice, gives me a nice little guideline, like where, where I want to go with it. So. That looks good, and we'll go ahead and we'll follow him up with the razor. An amazing razor, it's very expensive, but it was sent to me by a company called Titalus, and this is the Essence Razor. It uses a magnet, actually, to hold the blade. You can set it to any height you want, and it can hold every type of blade pretty much on the market. This is one of the times you really need to make sure you have your blade sharp. If it's not sharp, a lot of times I'll change it before I even get to this part. Don't go nowhere. We got a couple more tricks up our sleeve to really, really make this thing um, pop. So we're about to use these pencils and it's gonna really set this off. Before I use the pencil though, I need to make sure that I'm very happy uh, with the rest of the edge. Comb this hair down right here, get it in the way and use your shears to really square off these corners. I can use a little shear over comb. You can use a little bit of texturizing shears. Not, never too much with this type of hair. With hair like mine and hair like his, if you go overboard with these texturizing shears, you will not get it back. This is the nude side of the pencil. Once we have that ash line done, we're gonna come in with our trimmer and we're gonna blend this out. This is a great time to catch all those little overhang hairs. If you notice, I kinda like to try to do everything all at the same time. So I'm not going back and forth to steps for no reason. So this is a, this is a vapor blade. Um, it cuts very close. And you know, you don't always have to do this, but if you see anything, all right? With that being said, I hope you guys got a lot out of this video. 
If you guys are channel members and you watch this video as a member, I really appreciate you. I appreciate your support. I hope that you got a lot out of this lesson. And for the rest of you guys, I hope that you guys give a chance to the channel membership so you can watch this full haircut because it was actually a lot of work and 15 minutes really didn't do it justice. All right. This is the YouTube Barber Academy. I'm Mr. Eddie Barber and I hope you learned something today and I'll catch you guys in my next video where we do this fade right here. Um, it's a whole process. It's a bunch of work and you really need to learn every little piece. So you got a foundation that's strong. Uh, you don't wanna be skipping steps. Keep it locked, YouTube Barber Academy, Miss Ready Barber, and I'm out of here. Peace.